This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the learning platform for Flutter coders. So let's get started with Selector. So what is Selector? Well, selectors are a widget that is equivalent to a consumer. If you don't know what is a consumer, I have a video about it. The selector filter then updates by exposing a limited amount of values. And moreover, they prevent rebuilds if they don't change. Below, I have a simple example of how you use a selector with a change notifier. You will need two types. And the first one is an inherited type of widget, which means you could use a change notifier or a simple provider as both of them are inherited widget. The next type is this specific value data type that you want to get for your child or your builder method over here. Then in the selector params, you have two arguments. So the first one typically is the context and the second one is the inherited widget that you have created over here, which is the change notifier. Therefore, we are listening to the change notifier and we return the exact property of the object which fits the value data type that we have created over here. So if this value is an integer, this value data type is also an integer. If this is a string and this is an integer, then there would be an error. So you could see that selector is very particular on the data type that it is listening to. Then in the builder params, you have three arguments. So the first one, as you might have guessed it, it is the context. And then the second one is the value that is returning from the change notifier. And last one is the child widget. For this example, we will use the placeholders for the context and the child widget because we only want the value. Then we will pass in the value into our text widget over here. So let me give you a visual way on how it kind of works. So you have typically in an app, a Firebase user object, and then the filter is the selector. So once the Firebase user change, it will then get listened and then get filtered and update into the specific data that we usually want, which is the UID or the user ID, you know, to get our documents or collections. So I'm going to show you an example app that doesn't really use Firebase user, but a very simple counter example, which I always use. So this is a very simple counter app over here with a simple implementation of a change notifier. So I have a change notifier provider and a counter notifier. So the counter notifier is a change notifier that starts with the value zero. And then it has a getter method that returns the count value or private variable count. And then it has an increment method that increases the count value by one and then notify listeners to change the UI accordingly. So one thing to take note is the different print statements inside this app. So there is one print statement inside my homepage that says homepage building. There is another print statement inside the red box widget that says red box building. And lastly, we have the counter number widget that prints out counter number building. And as you can see here inside our debug console, our homepage and red box and counter number has been printed out accordingly because if you were to restart an application all of the widgets in your app will get built first so if there's any rebuild you could see that this will get printed out again and now i have the implementation of the selector widget over here so the selector is listening to the counter notifier that we have implemented earlier and we only want to listen to the integer type so the counter notifier has this dot count which is our number that we initiated started and then it also is an integer type and lastly you could see that I've written down everything over here in the builder method so the context the value is integer and the child is a widget but we don't really need it so then we will return the widgets that we want to build so we will wrap the red box around the counter number and inside there is this number params that we pass in the value inside so what do you think will happen if you were to click on this increment floating action button? Do you think only the counter number will get rebuilt 
or do you think the red box will get rebuilt or do you think all of the widgets in this app will get rebuilt so let's see first we will clear the console it's so it's easy for us to see and if you were to click on this increment button you could see that the red box and the counter number has rebuilt but we are only changing the number not the red box because the red box is a very static widget so how are we going to prevent this red box for it being rebuilt well if you know the answer we need to remove the red box widget and wrap it around the selector widget let's see if it works if we were to press this increment we could only see the counter number that has been rebuilt so now it works so in summary selector filters a specific type of data that we need however did you know there is a different type of selector well it is called context.select method so this is actually an extension of the context keyword in your build method in your widgets the method helps us to expose a value from a provider once it partially changes so before you have to write this word provider which is a long word not really and after that you will only write the context.select method with the data type that you need and in it it is a function that passes in the data type that you are listening to from the provider itself and then you will just return the value that you need you can also manipulate the data that you have received for example you can turn the value into a string very simple implementation however one thing to take note that it rebuilds the widget for where this context.select method lives therefore i would really recommend to use this only in small widgets so i'm going to show you how you're going to use this in the example app that we have so inside our my home page we have this count final variable that we got from the context.select and now with this we actually just get our counter notifier object and then we will only want the dot count or the getter method which returns the count variable inside our change notifier or our counter notifier and then with this count variable that we have then we will just put it inside our counter number don't worry about this selector it does nothing at all or it does not get rebuilt if the counter notifier dot count or this value is not being listened now if you were to click on the increment button what do you think will happen if you say all of the widgets has been rebuilt you are correct because this count gets from the build method that we have over here so that's why it rebuilds everything then you must be wondering what is the difference between a selector and a consumer well simply put the selector filter out the specific data while the consumer provides the build context for its widgets however this doesn't mean that a consumer can't do what the selector does and vice versa honestly this is just their main purpose of their existence but the similarities for both of these widgets is to optimize they both do granular or specific rebuilds very well so in summary we learn how to use the selector and context dot select and we know what's the difference between a selector and consumer even though they are very very similar so that's it don't forget to like and subscribe for more of these kind of videos and comment down what are the topics i should do next so stay safe and all the best bye bye